Welcome back, fellas. It's episode 63, Smoke and Mirrors. How you all living? Don't it is 63, there, yeah? Uh, yes. Are we, we're, we're counting last week's as an episode, aren't we? Yeah. We're just saying that's, that's a one-off. Yeah. Take it or leave it. <laughs> <laughs> Take it or go. We're making numbers. <laughs> 63 also, it is. Yeah. <laughs> I am yeah. doing fantastically well. Yeah, we're good, man. <clears throat> How are you going? I'm good. I'm good. The weather's really nice in Sydney. Mm. See, like, the blown-out sunset in the back there? Pause. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Blaring out the room there? Yeah. Blasting out the basement door. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Streaming news. All right. Let's talk it. So we got um, Colin Woodall, who has now been cast as, uh, what's his name? Winston, right? Mm. In the new um, uh, Continental series that's coming to FX and Hulu, I'm pretty sure. More than likely. Or Stars. Or Stars, even better then. Yeah, but we also got um, Mel Gibson, Michelle Prada, Hubert Point Point de Jour. So it's like Hubert Point of the Day which is wild, Jessica <laughs> Lane, Nung Kate, and Ben Robson. So all of them joined the Continental, right? But we also got some details on how they're actually going to sort of release the, the the season and sort of how the run times and whatnot. So they're saying that it's going to be a 90-minute episode hmm. and they're only doing three of them and it's going to be week to week, right? So 90 minutes, bang. That's one one third of the the show already out, which is pretty cool. It's pretty interesting. We haven't seen something like this since, like you know, an it mini series sort of sort of deal. Yeah, like mm-hmm. Stephen King sort of like you know Salem's Lot sort of thing. Yeah, which is wild I, back in the day. I thought it was like a over three nights, like mm. one, two, three, like in a row. Oh, which would be wild. Either way, it works for me because you get yeah. ninety minutes. Know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, but like if it's one of those three nights. Where they're like, you know, you seen Fear Street, and that was like week to week. This is like day to day, motherfuckers. <laughs> strength movies. That's exactly how they did. Well, this is exactly how they did Salem's Lot back in the day. So it was like part one, and then a whole week later was only part two. You know what I mean? So it mm. sort of built. It built that that um uh that excitement. Yeah. You know what I mean? For the yeah. next week. And even if you sort of didn't watch that, they, they, they ended up screening it again, like mid, like three, four days later, the first part, so you could catch up. Yeah, that's this fucking This was TV mad. back in the day, man. Yeah. I don't know if you could record it, unless you did record it. <laughs> you put the, the timer on. <laughs> the time, Either that or you was there, like, you know, and pausing the, the, the record during the ads. <laughs> <laughs> and you'd always know that like you know the the show was going to start after this ad because they'd show a show like a, a trailer for a show that's coming up and then yeah. that on that network and then the, the show would start i had it down to a science my friend <laughs> you couldn't tell you couldn't even tell where the pauses were <laughs> seamless the first se- seamlessly branching <laughs> video presentation can you, they, can you- they don't have the dedication like they did back in the nah, day nah, nah. these young cats they wouldn't know it's always like you know you see the brim of the fucking seat in front of you and that shit's still angling like a motherfucker <laughs> Like this motherfucker on a roller coaster when you recorded that shit. <laughs> like, can you I imagine having to. the big time? Imagine having the dedication to doing that shit, and you didn't have the VCR to record on your home TV. So a motherfucker just out here with the camcorder in the lounge. <laughs> 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 wow! Even though you could plug your camcorder in and record what was on TV, like you could do that. But <laughs> tapes wasn't big enough, son. Nah. You couldn't have, you couldn't yeah, record yeah. that long. I think it was like forty five minutes or something on one of those tapes. You'd have to like time it with the ads. Yeah. God God forbid you get caught out in one of them like, you know, mid like in between ads. There was no way to cut it out. Like yeah. you couldn't go to that spot and just cut out those ads. <laughs> <laughs> but then they released like TiVo and then TiVo used to just take out all the ads apparently. Yep. <sighs> TiVo wow. is the future. Fuck yeah. It was, but that's when all the networks started losing money, right? 
because mm. nobody would watch live TV then. Yeah. Everybody would TiVo it. And nobody would watch ads then. So they were like, you know what? Fuck you. We're not paying you that money anymore for that for those ads. <laughs> it was wild business. It's almost like TiVo like laid the groundwork for like Netflix and all yep. these streamers that are coming out now. Yeah. People, people wanted more. It kind of throws me off nowadays with streaming services where they have a subscription where it's like, you can have the ads if you want to. Like, what kind of fucking psychopathic motherfucker do you have to be to not pay the extra, like, $2 to not have ads? What are you going to do? Cheap is the answer to that one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm skint. Fucking skinty poos. <laughs> um, so Apple TV Plus is uh, is doing some things over there. They're uh-huh. making a new anthology series called hmm. uh, uh, Extrapolation. Yep. Okay. That um that sounds like really scientific, uh, but it's it's about um the global warming. So you're gonna have all these different characters, like Meryl Streep's gonna be in there, and her characters under wraps. Um, mm-hmm. Kit Harrington's in there, and he's gonna be like you know showing you from the perspective of a ceo of a business what the fuck's what what happens with global warming and 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 climate change and whatnot and -hmm. then you got matthew reese in there who's going to show you from like a um a a family perspective Mm. what goes what goes down and how what what the impacts are um narrative feature sounds pretty boring this isn't the show that i would watch Mm. you know what i mean but Show me a trailer and it like it's crazy and I'll be there. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, they got, you got one trailer, Apple. <laughs> I don't know, man. Apple been putting out content though, like watchable content. So I'm excited. We got a lot of shit coming yeah. from them real soon. Hopefully, it's yeah. good. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. But, um, Meryl yeah. Streep wouldn't sign on to a dog. Yeah, very true. I reckon she's gonna be the president. Actually, mm. that's why her role is under wraps. I don't know why that's like the big thing. Mm. But it'd, anyway. be, it'd be kind of cool if she's the same president from um, Up in the Sky. Yeah. She's the president in there? She's the president. Oh, shit. I didn't yeah. know that. She's the president. Jenna Hill is her advisor. Fuck. All yeah. Right. Very good. Mm. Very good. So we also have Uma Thurman uh, coming through for a Showtime series titled Super Pumped. Uh, so this is the one where she plays Ariana Hoffman, um, and Huffington. she's one of the business. Huffington Hoffman. <laughs> My bad. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, basically, it's about the rise of Uber. Yeah. So this goes yeah. through that relationship with the co-CEO and all that. It sounds exciting. I'm all about the downfall of taxis and their fucking overrated prices over here. <laughs> Badly. And their bullshit tactics. Give me $50 now and I will take you home. And then you pay me the rest there. Fuck out of here. Terrible. Oh, there, there, was, terrible. there was a lot of people just running. Though. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. I actually got a mad story from a, from a cabbie this one time. He said back in the the eighties here, when running was ripe, <laughs> like, uh, this guy was like, "Ah, oh, you know, uh, take me from here to like Cabra," and he was like, "Yeah, yeah, no worries, I'll take you through." And this guy just seemed real skittish, and he was like, "All right, cool." But this is back when cabbies used to carry like lead pipes under their seats and <laughs> shit. <laughs> And so he drops him off in Cabra, and this is back when Cabra, remember Cabra, I don't know, but Cabra had this apartment block where it was just druggies everywhere. Yeah. Stops him out there, and this dude tries to pull a fucking runner. <laughs> the cabbie fucking chased him. Jeez. <laughs> With the pipe. It wasn't Sans pipe, it was Pro Pipe Pause <laughs> at this point in time. <laughs> fucking chases him down, beats the shit out of him, takes whatever money he had, and then gets in the cab and bails. <laughs> So you laid the pipe. <laughs> Cabbies were excellent pipe players. <laughs> Fake taxi, please. <laughs> I'm a surgeon now. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Rise of Uber, man. This will be very interesting because I've always wanted to see how they went from like starting and how they got people to actually get into this shit. Badly. Yeah. But That'll be interesting. This is also the story of her starting up the Huffington Post as well. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Huffington. 
Hmm. So uh, Netflix came through and they said, you know what? You know what we want to do for our investors? We want to change the way that we that we that we're, that we're rating shows and show viewership and whatnot. So right now they just count. You know, I think it's anyone who watches the first five minutes or whatever it is of a show. Two minutes. Two minutes. Two minutes. My my god! So <laughs> they, they watch the intro and then the, and then that's it, right? Unless it's mm-hmm. Ozark, where it's just like straight in there. Yeah. So what they're going to do now is they're actually going to change it up. So they're actually going to put down. They're actually going to disclose the amount of hours that collectively everyone has actually watched the show which is yeah. wild because you had like you know uh, Squ- squid games come out and they they set what 99 million hours people sat there watching squid games fucking unbelievable the 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 the, the person in second is 78 million hours with extraction like it's that was still the the two minute views. So it was like, yeah, because Squid Game like blew away all the competition. Yeah, yeah. Like they're like 119 million views, and that's like the two minutes. So 119 million households watched that. That's that wild. Would be eh? like half a billion hours at least if they watched all of it. Yeah, because it's only what seven or eight episodes. Yeah, Squid Game. So. Is it? I mean, yeah, it's not. I haven't not, watched it yet. Not long. It's like eight hours. So eight hours times 119 million. It's a lot of hours. Fuck. Yeah, it's a lot of hours. So yeah, we, we'll, we'll see how they go. It's it's funny that they they launch this now with like you know Witcher and all their big sort of stuff sort of coming out. Yeah, I find it weird that they launched uh, like that Fear Street when they did. You know what I mean? It was still summer over there. Yeah. And they didn't sort of wait for Halloween to drop there because that would have been nice. Like yeah. something leading up all the way until Halloween for them. Yeah. Fucking Unless they've got something else planned. Unless they're going to make an announcement or something like that. But like, you're right. Like they have nothing now that contends or, or caters for Halloween except for like Night Teeth. I didn't watch which is, it. Which is out now. Out yeah. right now. Yeah. Yeah. They got next week to drop. Yeah. They've probably got something in their top. Yeah. I mean, this is like, it's the hours accumulated over 28 days. So that's going to be like their reporting period. Hmm. So you can you can imagine 500 million hours coming through. It's going to be wild. Yeah. Yeah. Some big oh, hits sure. coming up. Um, so HBO Max announced possibly... They're going to be looking into, um, sorry, going off the success of the Many Saints of Newark on HBO Max, because it wasn't mm-hmm. a big like box office uh, hit. They're looking to actually like maybe explore that period of the '60s and '70s with a new Soprano series. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm like, I'm excited for anything Sopranos, but. Like, I didn't feel like The Many Saints of Newark actually hit. I didn't really like it. You know what I mean? I don't want to explore that that era unless they're going to make it more of its own thing and less of, like, aping Sopranos. Yeah. I'm hoping that it's, you know, it's not... They, they try to do their own thing. That's yeah. what I want. You know what I mean? The Sopranos is and always will be its own thing. It's the only piece yeah. of television that that's ever been like that. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I, I just felt sh- fell short that movie. Mm. It didn't mm. give me hope for anything else because they were like, "We want to make more movies. We want to do this. We want to do that." And at first, I was like, "You know what? I'm in." But then yeah. the only thing that came out of that movie was um, James Gandolfini's son's performance. Yep, and and Michael, Bernthal, who's who's always good. Yeah. But he's I was going to ask thing. about the old. Hey, I was going to ask about the old Gandolfini and how he was. Was was good. He was good, man. He, he kills good. it. He's Tony to a T. Yeah. Um, and and Bernthal, he stayed away from the like how you see in Johnny Soprano in the original series, and just did his own thing. Yeah. Mm. Whereas everyone else that was playing a character that you know felt like they were just playing like this copy and it was just fan service and it just felt cheap mm. Mm. it was like insert insert bloody uh fan service here in the script you know what i mean yeah it was wild. like 
when they did the oh like yeah. it just it didn't feel like that yeah. it felt like a kid from a burbs kid from the burbs like rapping yeah a white kid too yeah, oh, oh shit! It's they gentrified the Sopranos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kind of was. Um, but yeah, they're, like this is very early days for that show. You know what I mean? No guarantee that it's even going to come to light. But it's just one of the ideas that Anne Sarnoff is like wet about because, <laughs> um, like it did so well in the service. Mm. And the, the original show's doing well as a result of the Many Saints of Newark now, and like this new generation's mm. like, fuck, The Sopranos, what's this about? Yep. I'll tell you what it's about, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> it's the great, greatest fucking character work you've ever seen. It's only the second greatest show. <laughs> <laughs> second greatest? Ever. Nah, Sopranos is the best show on TV. I haven't watched The Wire. So, like, you know, I'll, 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 I'll step back from the conversation and it'd be pleasantly surprised because, like, after watching Succession, like, that shit's something different, too. Succession is amazing. Oh, well, fuck off, will you? <laughs> 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 uh, beautiful. And that's it for streaming news this week. Yes, sir. All right. Into our uh, film news polls. Yep. <laughs> So, <laughs> we have news of Casey Affleck, Zoe Deschanel, Walton Goggins, Bo Bridges, Jack Dylan Grazer, Noe Yupe, and Chris Messina all joining um, Bill Polad's new film, uh, Dreamin' Wild. So, this is the story about um, the musicians Donnie and Joe Emerson and the success of their uh, Dreamin' Wild pop funk album. Yeah. So, uh, when it came out, it wasn't the biggest thing in the world, but then later on in the time in the film, critics reappraise. Um, and this is all decades later. And now the brothers have to face like their past and just the emotional toll that they went through in there. So it sounds really fucking interesting. Um, so Affleck and Yupe are going to play Donnie at different ages. And then it's mm. the same for Goggins and Grazer, or who, what they'll do for Joe. Um, Deschanel is going to play Donnie's wife and Bridges is going to be the father. And mm. um, Messina is going to be the, the executive at Attic Records. Mm. Um, it all sounds really cool. I, I like these uh, these music movies, man. They fucking get me in the feels every single fucking time. I'm just happy to see Goggins. Same. Yeah, I was I was gonna say they like they they caught a heater. Yeah, when they 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 got Goggins there. Big time, oh, man. Because he's gonna add that dynamic kind of like he can play the straight straight guy, mm. but he's also like he can switch it up and do comedy and anything. He, he'd do yeah. the wild. He'd, 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 he'd do the wild man as well. Yeah, if he yeah. wants to, if he wants to, if if it calls for it, you know, be the master. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Goggins could have been John McClane as well. He's at that age. He's got the same yeah. hair. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it would have been fucking perfect for him. Yeah, it would have been good. We'll see. We'll see what what Fox eventually does. More yeah, than likely, yeah. or Disney, really. More than likely, reboot. That's what I'm seeing. Yeah. yeah it's All, right. All right. So we got um this new movie called The Greatest Beer Run Ever, right? So it's mm. from uh, Peter Farrelly of the Farrelly Brothers uh, fame. Mm. Um, they just cast Zac Efron and Russell Crowe. So what the movie is about is, is really interesting, right? Is this guy that um he wants to have a beer with all of his mates. Right, wants to have a last beer with all of his mates. Um, embarks on this journey. Um, the only problem is they're in Vietnam right now, fighting Fuck. a fucking war. Yeah. Right. So this is about him sort of going over there and getting through Thailand and everything, just so he could have a beer with these boys. I'm actually surprised this wasn't an Aussie movie. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Greatest beer run ever. Like, honestly, can you imagine doing a beer run from, like, New South Wales to Perth or something like that? Fuck. Or, like, from New South Wales to, like, bloody Tassie and then all the way up to Perth and then... Can... This movie wouldn't be called The Greatest Beer Run Ever. This would just be called Waiting for a Mate. <laughs> what do you mean? It'd literally just be called Friday. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking boring. best piss up you've ever seen, lad. <laughs> Fucking bad, but... This sounds mad, though. Oh, man. Mm. Like, you, you you know this is going to be fucking, like, that tone where it's, it's funny, but it's it's so, 
it's so weird that it's real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is it's based on a true story as well. Yeah, but it was it was a book as well. So they're adapting it from the book. Hmm. Yeah, it's going to be really I cool. Like this. Um, coming up for John Cena. Um, <laughs> and his name is John C. <laughs> and then New York Summer Slam. <laughs> so he's in negotiations to star in Pierre Morel, who directed Taken's next movie called Freelance. So the story is about John Cena, who is the leader of like this outfit and their mercenaries, or in, they're in the army. Mm. Might be a marine. Um, and then he, um, his crew gets shut down overseas. They get taken out and he's the only one that survives. He retires from being in the military forces and then becomes like a freelance, like bodyguard sort of person. Right. Then, um, there's a job protecting this, uh, this investigative journalist. Mm. And then she goes over and meets with this dictator who he finds out was the same dictator that set his team up. And then it just sets the scene for just ass kicking and, and, and John Cena double kicks. John Matrix. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this like is Commando time. with a bit more story. <laughs> <laughs> a, bit, a bit more character development. Badly. Could be good, man. Could be good. Especially if, it, if it's grounded Cena, it could be all right. And if it's grounded morale as yeah. well. Yeah. Because Pierre, he, he can get over the top sometimes. Mm. But, like, if, if you keep him in a box sometimes, like, it, it works out really, really well. Yeah, if it's the yeah. Taken box, that's yeah. all right. But if it's the Taken 3 box, get the fuck out of here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but I think Megaton directed that. 3? Did he? I think so, because Pierre didn't do all of them. I think he only did the first one. That's why the first one stands out oh, the way that shit. it does. Do you ever watch Peppermint? Uh, yeah. No. How was that? It was okay. All right. Yeah. Olivia Megaton did three. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. As soon Sorry, as I bro. see Megaton, I was just like, I don't, I don't know about this. <laughs> he did that uh, The Last Days of Crime or whatever on Netflix. It's like mm. two and a half hours. I seen the runtime and then I seen the ratings and I was like, I will not put myself to that. <laughs> I cannot sit through two two and a half hours of Megaton. Nah. Seriously. Like even the the transporter films that he did, I was like, what is going on here? And they were eighty minutes long. Yeah. And they feel like they're five hours long. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sometimes when there's too much bullshit on screen. Yeah, man. Nah. Takes me right out. Nah. I think the thing that fucked me up the most with them transporter movies was that one trailer. I think it was for two or three where you see the two cars going head on and this motherfucker jumps like 13,000 feet in the air to dodge <laughs> <laughs> It's when he bloody flips the car and then takes the bomb off the back of it. I, I was like, what is going on here? <laughs> like it, it wasn't this fanciful in the first one. <laughs> like, yeah. You didn't have special powers. <laughs> <laughs> I think, like, the most fancy they ever got in that first one was when you turned into the greased up deaf guy to fight all those blokes in the train yard. <laughs> but it, that was cool, though, because he had the bike pedals on his feet. Yeah. And Very he true. could balance, and they couldn't. Champion. Mate, they, they just need Basson to, like, write all these movies. Mm. Yeah. But sometimes even Basson and Mark Heyman, they write it. Yeah. And then it, it still ends up a turd. Yeah, it's yeah. almost like that. Uh, like I, it's weird because on the opposite spectrum, that that movie with Costner that they those two did, there's not that much action and whatnot in there. That three days to kill or whatever. Yeah, not I that didn't much watch action. That one. It's okay. It's not the best. Was, was that the one where it was like Crank, but it was Kevin Costner? No, 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 no. He's just an assassin, and he's got oh. literally three days to to pull off this job. Mm. But in those, like, he's trying to get to know his daughter and all this other stuff. And yeah. it's not bad. It just needs more action. Yeah. That was that was during that fad when, like, everyone seen Taken. They were like, what's the next Taken? Mm. Show me the next old guy. Yeah. You see them come up to the script with Costner. And it's like, so there's going to be seven action scenes. And Costner just hits him with the fucking, the Man of Steel. <laughs> <laughs> One. 
<laughs> only one. <laughs> I think there's only one action scene in The Bodyguard. Maybe two. Two. Yeah. Very true. Unless we count the third him getting it on Whitney Houston. Boom! <laughs> yeah, you, can't, you, can't, you can't count the, uh, the blouse in the air and the, the sword cutting it. <laughs> like, that shit is ridiculous. It <laughs> was <laughs> But, like, you know, it would happen. If that sword was kept sharp, it would happen like that. Yeah, that's true. It do be facts, though. <laughs> <laughs> so we got, um, we got John Majors onto his next film as well. Uh, so this one is called Magazine Dreams. So he's, he signed on to Star. Um, I'm not too sure if he's going to be the lead actor. I'm not surprised if he will be. Um, but it follows an amateur bodybuilder. And he's trying to find human connection um, in the exploration of celebrity as well as violence. Uh, not too many other details have been provided, but it sounds interesting. We're getting a lot of bodybuilder flicks nowadays, but I'm cool with this as well. But if this is John Majors, like, in his bag, in the leading role, fuck, I'm, I'm in for it, man. I like John Majors. Very good yeah. at what he does. Mm. Do you know how yeah. big he's going to be in Creed, then? Fuck. he's a bad guy in Creed. Yeah. Yeah, he's the, he's the antagonist in Creed. Mm. If he's doing a bodybuilding movie after that movie, he is going to be huge in Creed. Yeah, he's already quite big. Yeah, yeah. Like and he's, he's going like, to be he's massive. Lean. Yeah, because you haven't seen him. He's been hiding away lately. Mm. That's true, actually. What has he seen? Loki was the last thing that you seen him in. Yeah, but he yeah. shot Loki nearly a year and a bit ago. Yeah. Fuck shit. So Manz has been hiding away. He must be huge. <laughs> and what's his face has been hiding away as well? Michael Not B. Me. Jordan. So he must be getting yeah. bigger too. If those guys can get up to heavyweight, we're not talking Tyson Fury and Wilder here. 260, 235. If they can get get up to like, you know, proper maybe 220, just at the cusp of heavy heavyweight, it'd be next level, man. Fuck. Is that what Adonis fights in? Heavyweight? Heavyweight, yeah. He's a heavyweight champion of the world. Okay. So you can only, like, I mean, Tyson Fury is 267 pounds. Fuck. He said he wanted to get up to 300 pounds when he fought Wilder the last time. He just couldn't do it. Wilder jumped up Fuck. from 208 or something to 230 something. 238. <laughs> Like, these are big guys, man. Admittedly, they're taller than, than Michael B. Jordan and them, but still, yeah. these are big yeah. guys. Fucking 267. I was just checked out. It's like 121 kilos, man. Yeah. I'm I'm 6'4 and 98. That's fucking wild. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine putting on like 40 pounds of muscle. <laughs> because he's so tall and that, he's just naturally like that. Like, he's natural yeah. at that weight. Yeah. yeah. Fuck. It's wild. Fucking crazy shit. That's it. And that's, that's all it. our film news. Yeah, that's it. Uh, and now it is time to fan Lay Hammer. No gunshots this week. Maybe next week. Gunshots. <laughs> gunshots. Gun <laughs> <laughs> all right. So why the last man was canceled? Just out of nowhere. Hasn't, hasn't uh, screened the, the finale yet. Just canceled. <laughs> um, J.K. Simmons and Jacob Scipio have joined uh, the Batgirl over at HBO Max, Hulu ordered a uh, History of the World sequel TV series, which is kind of cool. Mm -hmm. um, Ozark is season four is going to air on the 21st of the 1st, yeah. 2022. Fuck yeah. Uh, Marvel had big delays, giant, giant delays, but that's only because they've got so many, so many films coming out and they mm -hmm. just need to make space. They didn't want to. Yeah. Um, Indy five has been delayed a whole year, Fuck. which is wild. Um, the Eternals comes out soon um came out it's got two end cre end credit scenes right now. um production finished on the flash it's done yeah. um we got the first photos of nick cage in um the western butcher's crossing which looks looks kind of cool it's a bald nick cage which he should get used to mm -hmm. um rob zombie rob zombie showed off his first uh photos of the monsters and it Damn near looks just like the TV show. It looks really, really cool. Um, mm -hmm. Danny DeVito, he joined Haunted Mansion. Um, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, it started filming this week. 
Um, Emily, Emily Blunt joined um, Oppenheimer for Nolan, that hack. Babylon, <laughs> Babylon finished filming. Um, Ryan Gosling is set to play Ken in a Barbie film. Uh, Ryan Reynolds is actually taking a little break from acting. He's been going for a bit now. I think he deserves it. And uh, Hayden Christensen is going to join the Ahsoka TV show. And that's all the fan we got for that hammer. Very good there, Bado. Thank you. Yeah. Fuck. So, uh, Barbara Gordon's daddy was white. Which is wild, huh? Yeah. Like, it's but- not, um, not the other, not the other, uh, Fuck, what's Matt that? Reeves, Batman? Yeah. Yeah. Bernard. Yeah. Yeah. So, the, like, it's, it's weird because you got some some people playing in that Snyder verse and you got some people playing in some other verse. Yeah, it's like every HBO yeah. Max movie is Snyder verse. Which now. makes me think, why can't they have a Justice League 2? Yeah. Exactly. I don't know. I'm hoping, like, bitches. Um, I'm still on the hopes that just the flash just like merges everything together. And that's why you have separate verses. You know what I mean? Yeah. It'll never happen, but I'm just keeping it that way. That's my narrative. for now. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Moving into movie trailers. So uh, we got our first trailer, first look at Maggie Gyllenhaal's The Lost Daughter. She, uh, she wrote and directed this one. It's got Olivia Coleman in the title. Um, uh, Fanning, no, Dakota Johnson as mm-hmm. um, as the other um, mother in the movie. So this is the mm-hmm. one where she goes away uh, to Italy. It's just her. She leaves her daughters at home. Her kids are home, and um, she finds herself really intrigued and latching on to this other younger mother mm-hmm. that's at this um, this holiday resort that she's at. Um, the family's really loud and everything and just throws off like her equilibrium completely and makes her think about some of her, her choices when she was sort of raising her kids. Um, it does, it does look good and it looks like, like she, she almost just loses her mind. Olivia Coleman, like putting on a fucking masterclass again there. Yeah. This, this trailer actually made me like physically uncomfortable with some of the scenes. Mm. But um, fuck, it looks interesting, man. I might actually yeah. sit down and watch this. A lot of these, like, uh, you know, the not broken family, but the family-related fucking movies and shows that are coming out soon. Yeah, shit is like on point, son. I find when it's a movie about self-realization through trauma, mm. that shit yeah. hits different. Yeah, yeah, fucking earth. Shit is a whole different entity, mm. dog. It's an ethereal being. In this landscape, <laughs> my ethereal being of a movie will be released on, on, on Netflix shortly. <laughs> um, we got our first little teaser there. It wasn't, it wasn't too much. We got mm-hmm. our first little teaser trailer for being the Ricardos. So you get to see Lucy or what's her face, um, Kidman. Nicole Kidman. You get to yeah. see Ricky, mm. which is cool. Yeah, um, but yeah, didn't get to see much in this though. Yeah. No, it, it was almost like a mood piece where they were just kind of ratcheting up that tension, but mm. they were like, and not showing her face. Did you notice that? Yeah, they weren't, mm. they weren't sort of showing you Nicole Kidman until she steps into that bucket of grapes. I don't know if that's the shot to kind of like you know showcase this is Nicole Kidman as as Lucy. Yeah, um, yeah. Ball. Mm. It looks good though. Does look good. Aaron Aaron Sorkin doing his thing. Yeah. So you is gotta, it writing his ers and ums in that script? Yeah. Is it is it weird that I feel <laughs> very true. Is it weird that I feel like this is the first time we've ever heard Bardem not use his like normal speaking voice in a movie? Yeah. Bardem, Bardem never ever uses his normal speaking voice. You realize that, right? The only time you hear Bardem talk with his actual normal speaking voice is in one of his Spanish language films. What's that? Yeah. Uh, e to whatever it is. E to Mama Bien. Yeah, that's the only time you'll hear him talk normally. This is my real speaker voice. Like, literally, <laughs> literally. He does have that tone of voice when he speaks. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. the maddest voice, though. Oh, yeah. yeah. I almost feel like Bardem can play a hero and a villain. At the same time, though. Yeah. yeah. That he makes, anti-hero. He makes the, the, the best sort of anti-hero. Yeah. Like, he should go up against, or he should be with, with Benicio. Right? There's yeah, another right. person who never actually uses his, his speaking voice. In Sicario. Like, three or something. Yeah, that'd be cool. That would yeah. be fucking mad. If Writing this might. shit right now for you, Sharon. <laughs> <laughs> Get it done. <laughs> but I want, I want Denny to come back though. Fuck oh man, yeah. he promised, he promised he would. Yeah, he said he needs to. Man. If Taylor wrote the script, I'll come back. He wrote the last one. Yeah, but he couldn't do it because of what's his face. He was shooting Blade Runner at the time. Yeah. 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 You just see Sheridan hung upside down like in fucking TDK and he's just reading off like, I will be reading and writing the script for Sakari 3. <laughs> off the bench in our game. <laughs> <laughs> we got our, um, we got a little teaser uh, for Cowboy Bebop as well. A long teaser. Uh, yeah. yeah. So this is going through like the relationship between Spike and Faye and all that. Mm. It looks pretty cool though. It was nicely done how they set it up. Like it was almost like comic panels and they break through and they're showing off the personalities of everyone and them trying to become bounty hunters and everything like that. So work out what this is 10 episodes compared to 26 for the fucking the anime as well. This is pretty cool as well. I'm fucking excited, man. Like Cowboy Bebop is like near the, the tippy top of fucking anime for me. They'd probably be it's, like an hour long, though. So, I mean, you're getting three episodes in one hit. You know what I mean? like, <laughs> it's like three episodes. <laughs> it fuck it cool. I like the fighting. I like the um, the, the actors as well. So, John Chu mm. actually looks... Looks like Spike. Like Spike. Yeah. 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 So cool, man. Yeah, I, li- I like the look of it. Um the only thing is, it looked very set heavy. Mm. Like it, it did look like that, but like the creativity on like that we're seeing is pretty cool. It yeah. it would it I mean it would be really set heavy, right? That there's no way they'd go out there and shoot out in the wild when you got the big C like just that's looming. You know what I mean? Like yeah, we're yeah. gonna see a lot of this now. Like the the yeah. movies that were shot in the last two years will be all set driven movies yeah unless yeah, it's impossible when tom cruise is the only person allowed outside <laughs> oh no way <laughs> <laughs> he's the Pretty only fun. one whose action isn't shot on a green the screen because <laughs> you can't shoot his action on a fucking green screen <laughs> he wouldn't allow it yeah true, that's true. i just want to like as a disclaimer, for anyone who's never watched Cowboy Bebop before, the show may be disorienting because it's one of the only shows where it jumps between like a Western neo noir into like a futuristic, but then into a jazz sort of setting at the same time as well. Mm-hmm. It changes right. all the time. Fuck. That's mad. Uh, we got a, a little trailer there. Our first look at Uncharted. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck <laughs> this movie. <laughs> Who, who got hard with the uh, with the plane sequence? No, because I didn't. <laughs> Not me. Fuck they, they marketed this fucking movie as okay. It's not going to be like the, it's going to be completely separate. It's not going to be like the games at all. You know what I mean? But then you start using game set pieces. Yeah, that's just lazy, son. It is big time. Um, I I'm not buying Holland as Drake. Me neither. No, I'm not buying uh, Wahlberg as Sully. Where's his fucking moustache? Yeah. I know. <sighs> exactly. Like, the thing that cucks me out is that they're putting, like, no offense to Tom Holland, but they're putting a little ass kid through so much fucking violence that looks like it's meant for grown ass men. Yep. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's funny because Tom Holland is 25. Yeah. yeah. He just doesn't look it. But. Yeah. yeah. Like, the way that they're showing, like, they're depicting Drake is that he's, like, slick. He knows how to fight. When, like, in actuality, in the in the games, he's bumbling his way through, like, most of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. He's falling off stuff more than he's jumping off of it. Yeah. Yeah. Nathan uh, Drake is a treasure hunter by trade, not a fucking action star. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, they, they showcased a lot of, like, big action in there. Mm. We get Chloe, 
we find out that Chloe Fraser's actually in this one. So- sounded Aussie from the little snip- snippets that you heard, but could be British. I don't know. Um, looks like like Chloe though. Yeah, looks like Chloe. Yeah. <sighs> I that next that next trailer better be fire. Yeah. But at this point, I'm not excited for this. Not no. at all. They they can kind of keep it. Like I'm like I would rather another No Way Home trailer than to see another Uncharted trailer. Big time. And Big this comes out fairly time. soon. Start of the year. Yeah. Hmm. Now we got another trailer. Yet again, another trailer for for Red Dead. Like I've I've seen too much of this movie now. <laughs> <laughs> Badly, they just got to release the it now. Movie, man. <laughs> Comes out in two weeks. I don't feel like watching it now. Mm. So what what I learned in this trailer that I didn't know before was that she frames Dwayne Johnson. Mm. She frames the Rock's character. I probably didn't need to know that. That could yeah. have been like a nice little like surprise in the movie. But she yeah. frames him, and that's why he has to team up. Yeah, because he's been like disavowed, like Ethan Hunt is every yeah, movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like under the ghost protocol now. Yeah. Um, but what's his face? Like, I think that's the biggest mistake that movie trailers make is that they give away the motivations in the trailer mm-hmm. way too fucking quick. Yeah. I mean, the the movie trailer should be the buy me two drinks before you fuck me. That's it. Yeah. It's just a preview. It shouldn't. It shouldn't. It shouldn't be the whole movie. We know what's going to happen now, right? Like, we know they're all going to team up in the end, and then there's going to be an overarching bad guy that they're going to be. Yeah. yeah. Like, we know what's going to happen now. I don't need to watch your movie. I can even <laughs> tell you what your fucking end credit is going to be, mate. You know what I mean? Like, it's... We know. <laughs> it's going gonna, it's gonna to be an old action star that shows up at the end that's going to be the villain in the fucking next film. That's what, that's what it's going to be. I hope not. It's going to be Keanu Reeves or someone like that that's going to show up and he's going to be the villain in the next fucking movie. And they're going to have to take him down. Literally what's going to happen. I'm calling it now. <laughs> Either that, they couldn't afford Keanu, they're going to get Bruce Willis. You know what I mean? Like, that's what they're going to do. <laughs> At this point, Bruce Willis is willing to put down his price. Yeah. After yeah. all them DTV movies. <laughs> you know Bruce Willis. Be- it, it, if they actually said, hey, like at the end of the credits as, as a surprise and it was actually Diesel mm. as the bad guy in the next one, that'd be cool. Yeah. You reckon? Yeah. Do you know how much money they'd make? Do you know how Fuck much no. money they'd make? Yeah. How many views they'd get? If people knew that Diesel was the villain in the next Red Notice, they'd lose yeah. their fucking mind. <laughs> Burn the fucking house down. <laughs> Burn the fucking place to the ground. <laughs> They could then, if if they teased that, they could take that next one and play it theatrically for two weeks before it even hits the service and big make time. big money. Oh, big time. They make Fast and Furious money. Yeah. That's what they'd make. They would. What do you call it? It's going to be, I reckon there'll be a moment where they'll do a shout out to Carmen Sandiego as well. And you'll see like Gal Gadot, Gal Gadot gets away <laughs> and then you see her in the red overcoat with the hat, like booking a fucking plane ticket. <laughs> <laughs> I called it. It is hmm. common San Diego. I reckon. But hmm. yeah, I could be wrong. Could be wrong. Uh, what do we get? Ah, you, King Ricardo. You the, yeah, that's it. King Ricardo. <laughs> 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 the sequel to be the Ricardos. <laughs> but what do you call it? Uh, yeah, we got our next trailer for King Richard as well. Uh, fuck, this looks so good, man. But this, this is, is going through all... Year. Oh, man. Fucking, yeah. we got more info, just like more of uh, Will Smith going through. You learn that Will Smith isn't like a trained tennis coach, but he's really just like, he sees greatness in his daughters, but then it also delves into what are the ulterior motives for himself as well, and him making choices for them uh, rather than ask them the questions, but then having that bonding moment with his daughters as well and seeing them happy and what they want to do. Mm. Uh, we see so we see a little bit of Bernthal. We see a little bit of, I uh, always forget his fucking name. But he's telling off uh, Ricardo there. <laughs> yeah, man, he's he's the the father in the the mini series of um, the Shining. What's his face? This like this is going to be mm-hmm. the movie of the year. Yeah, I can see the you know I, I reckon Smith's going to get a lot of a lot of play from this. Like, yeah. 
it does look like he's going to be in Oscar contention. Yeah, mm. for sure. Yeah, yeah. I reckon this might be like next year might be the year Smith walks away with the gold. I hope finally. so. Finally, man. You know what yeah, I mean? Like, yeah. I mean, Smith Smith's been doing this for for a while now. Mm. But it's only when Smith doesn't play in like Smith roles. Yeah. When he can like actually put his ego aside and be the loser. Yeah. Or, or be the guy that doesn't kill like the bad guy. You know yeah. what I mean? Um, that I reckon he'll he'll actually pull that off. Mm. Uh, but in this, fuck, he looks like he's bringing the bringing the goods. Yeah. yeah. He's he's channeling that, that Ali. He's channeling that that what's his face? Like you can see it. Yeah, it looks yeah. like he was actually interested in this role, though. That that's for me. That's what yeah. it is. Like yeah. he actually, you know what? I actually want to make this movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like on the lighter side of things, as fucked up as it sounds, I went for someone to to copy paste his face from the entanglement scenario over him <laughs> crying in the King Richard trailer as well. <laughs> it's it's bound to fucking happen <laughs> badly, big time. And we uh, will do it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we we got our first um, look at the Netflix uh, anime, The Summit of the Gods, yeah, uh, which is an adaptation from a uh, a Japanese author's book as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so this this one's about this guy that creates this new character, this new camera that could change the way that people capture mountain climbing, and then. He hooks up with this climber that's that's been gone for a while, and then coerces him into to climbing Everest, the west the west face of Everest. One Southern last time. Face? I don't know. One of the faces. Yeah. The um, face. <laughs> the face matters, by the way. There's an easy way up Everest. There's a hard way up Everest. He's taking the hard way up fucking Everest. Pause. I I remember west from the article. Right. Yeah. You know, if you remember south. I thought that's what they said in the trailer. It must have been. It's going to be the first person to attempt this, uh, the, the the south face of Everest. Okay. Um, but then, yeah, they, they kind of, um, while this guy is climbing, it almost seems like he's uncovering all the shit from his past, and that's probably the reason why he hasn't been climbing for that long. And it's more mm. dramatic. Like yep. it's not an action movie. It's not, and usually that's where I go for for like animes. I pick them based on the action. I will not watch a dramatic anime. Yeah, this shit looks good. Mm. This is amazing. Like just the, cool. the the look, the 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 feeling, everything is just mm. it's different. It's a different yeah. anime for me. Yeah. yeah, and it's it's French. Oh well. Yeah, it's not not Japanese. Okay. The animation is probably Japanese, but it, it looks like an old French production, aside mm. from the animation. They have a history with anime, though. The French. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. We'll do that shit well. Fucking excite bike. It's the last trailer there, bad Amber lamps. <laughs> Amber lamps. <laughs> what do you call it? This looks fucking cool, man. Mm. Um, so, we get, our fi- we get finally our first look at, at Ambulance, so... We have, uh, always forget his name, Abdul Mateen. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. What do you call it? We I get him it. and his his wife needs uh, surgery sometime soonish, but he just doesn't have the funds for it. And then his brother, Jake Gyllenhaal, comes through. And then we start learning about the relationship between them, how it all works out. And we get some snippets of the heist that they go through to try and get this money as well. And how Abdul Mateen's actually sort of, not conned, but coerced into actually helping him do this fucking heist. Hmm. I'm fucking in- enjoying this shit too because we get to see like you know the the badass Jillian Hall, but then we also see the fucking the slick Jillian Hall when he's talking to that cop at the door as well. Yeah, yeah. Fucking Greg. <laughs> <laughs> it's Greg from Succession. <laughs> Poor bastard. <laughs> I gave Greg him the quite egg. a billion dollars for this. <laughs> <laughs> you can't make a tomlet without breaking a few Gregs. <laughs> <laughs> and you emailed him that 38 times <laughs> <laughs> fuck I hate Tom oh what a dickhead <laughs> hey 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 don't fuck it up <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah I mean 
I, I thought with Ambulance we were going to get like the more sort of introspective, dramatic kind of fan. Everything was going to be in the four walls of that moving ambulance. That's what yeah. I thought as well. I didn't know we were going to get the bank heist to fucking chase uh, through the streets, the explosions, the helicopters with Gyllenhaal leading out with the fucking, like, you know, the chopper and shit. I, I didn't know. know we were going to get Bad Boys Bay. Yeah. That bay Boys. Yeah, it's weird, it right? Like, we're getting Bad Boys Bay. It does look like Bad Boys Bay. It's wow. It just needs to be Miami. That's yeah. what we said. <laughs> what do you yeah. call it? Some of the fucking winding shots in this movie look sick as well. They're like really fast and they come down from above, through, under, and then fucking whoop. I ain't never seen shots like this before. So you never put it down like this. <laughs> yeah, that's Bay, man. That's just literally what it is. It's Bay. I'm fucking I'm, cool. I'm, I'm excited, excited for this. We, I wasn't yeah. that excited before, to be is honest. This I was... out at, at the movies? Or yeah. is this a stream? Yeah. This is theaters exclusive. Yeah. Very good. That's Very why Bay, good. Bay had to do a big this time. Even though yeah. Six Underground was big. It was giant yeah. that movie. Yeah. I'm still waiting for a fucking sequel. Mm. Yeah. Well, we won't get it now with uh, Mr. Reynolds on sabbatical. You know, Bay still needs to get it written and everything. And yeah, yeah. Reynolds will be on sabbatical for like a year, year and a half, and then we'll get the news about Deadpool three. That's right. I reckon that's yeah. That's what he's waiting on, eh? Yeah. He's he's just playing hardball now. Mm-hmm. He's like, yeah. mm. he's holding his breath until he gets what he wants. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's nothing new. <laughs> but. Some of the best trailers this week, man. Fuck all was good. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. It was a big trailer oh, yeah. blowout this week. It really yeah. was. Yeah. So I but didn't even expect Uncharted. Me neither. Yeah. But I don't like, think we would have got one, to be honest. You reckon? No. I think with with the trailer leaking, they, they forced their hand. Yeah. Had to. But we just got trailer back shots paused uh, this fucking week. It's just how it was. Really did. I wasn't expecting any of them, to be honest. Uh, and that's it for movie trailers this week. That's it. Sir. What's Steve in that entertainment in news? All right. So this is like really, really bad, this one. Right. Yeah. So just this week um, on the set of Rust, uh, Helena Hutchins was actually killed in a, in a prop gun accident on set. Right. So... Alec Baldwin was actually wielding the prop gun. Um, it looks like he was shooting towards the camera. Um, bullet passed through the camera, passed through Helena, and then ended up hitting the director, Joel Souza, as well. Mm. Which is fucking wild, right? Yeah. So, uh, what's his face is just devastated. The Baldwin is devastated. Like he he can't believe what's going on. Yeah, he's 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 done. He released a statement, but you know, I I saw you saw him after. Mm. There was pictures of him after, and he's just losing it. Yeah, like they 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 they're still investigating. They don't know what sort of happened just yet. Um, that there, there, there are rumors flying around that uh, safety protocols were sort of dropped because they hired non-union. Um, non-union staff and, you know, that, yeah, safety protocols just wasn't there. Like, this is nearly exactly what happened to, to Brandon Lee. Yeah. Right? Except it wasn't, it wasn't an actor getting killed. It was, it was part of the crew, man. Yeah. Like, this is a cinematographer. Mm. It was just wild, this. To have it happen now? Mm. Like, in this day? Like, yeah. it just doesn't sound right, man. Like, we've got so many safety protocols that you go through. Mm. And for, for, for that to happen now? Nah, son. Yeah. So, was, no, you go. You there were reports of, of the gun doing this before as well, right? So, earlier yeah. in the month or in the in the week. Like, if that, that prop master, like, you know, he, like, on, on the, the, the 911 call, you hear the person say that prop master needs to go to jail. Like he caused this. Fuck. It was wild, man. You know the the prop master from from what I've sort of read online is barely in their twenties. 
Um, this also comes on the back of the, the IATSE going on strike. Yep. Uh, another producer on the film also basically told everyone that was in like the IATSE to get the fuck off the set. Otherwise, you'll be removed by security. They left hours before they're packing up their stuff as the New Mexico um, locals were coming in and, and sort of setting up the set. Right before Baldwin goes to do the scene, the prop master says to him, it's a cold gun. When someone says it's a cold gun, that thing's been checked, double checked, triple checked to make yep. sure nothing is in the barrel. Mm -hmm. There's nothing there that can cause harm. Mm -hmm. they're saying it might be a live round yeah i've also heard and this this might be a massive rumor as well i've also heard that one of the crew had taken the gun out to go hunting jesus and left live rounds in there but still like they would then need to check that fucking gun that's right before like the who was it tim kennedy was saying like you you treat even if a gun doesn't have bullets in it you treat it like it's a live weapon, man. You treat yeah. it like that. That's how it should be treated. That gun should have been checked and double checked and triple checked again. Yeah. There, there's there's no excuse for that. That there's no excuse for that oversight. You're putting people's lives in danger. You know what it's I mean? A movie. Like, it, yeah, exactly. It's not like you're gonna get bloody you know thrown off the set for triple checking a fucking gun. Exactly. This is this is something that that can definitely hurt people. It's, yeah. they're, they're real guns. They're brand new, real fucking guns. Yeah. It's not like it's like some piece of bloody wood or something from yeah. back in the 1970s. This is a real gun that fires real bullets. Like, all you need to do is put, put another bullet in there. A different bullet. A bullet that's not bloody, you know, closed at the end. Hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> this is just dumb shit yeah the uh, whole the whole thing is dumb like they had two incidents before where someone yeah. also fired live rounds so craig craig zobel you know craig zobel is yeah the mm. guy know, and uh mayor mayor of eastwood mayor of Easttown. yeah right he, he was like there's no reason right now in this day and age to have guns firing live rounds on set yeah. you know what i mean he said that um, every shot in Mare of Eastwood where you see a gun firing is all computer generated. He said, sometimes you can see it, but still, it's the peace of mind. You know what I mean? That's right. Yeah. Um, John also, Wick. Uh, yes. Yeah, John Wick. Exactly. John Wick is all, all that's happening is the cockback of the actual, the actual weapon. Yeah. The, the, the muzzle flare, the, the bullet flying out the side, everything is all CG. In, uh, uh, fuck, Once Upon a Time in Mexico, those are rubber guns. Yeah. The muzzle flash and the explosion, like, side of it, that's all CG. Yeah. And that's uh, what it's supposed to be now. Like, it doesn't make sense. Like, we yeah. think that those bullet hits in, in Wick are real. Yeah. Like, they look real. Yeah. There's no reason to, to use live rounds on set anymore, man. Nah, not at all. Um, as a result, uh, the um, Nathan Fillion show, The Rookie, hmm. no longer using like light, like prop guns or real guns on set. Yeah. They're changing that shit. They sh I also think they should change like if for some reason they can't do that for whatever reason, they should not be firing it at the camera. There should not be a shot where like. It's pointed at anyone else yep. in that vicinity. That's right. This is sad shit, man. Yeah. Hel mm -hmm. Hel Helena Hutchins was 42 years old. She, she just got off um, Arch Enemy, the Joe yep. Manganiello one. Yeah. She, she just got sort of like highlighted as like a cinematographer to watch. Yeah. She, she, was, she was slowly becoming one of those, one of those people, man. Yeah. Like it's, she was gonna be the next that next big thing. Yeah. Supposedly, the look of Arch Enemy is unreal. Like that's the best yeah. thing about that movie. It's not the story. It's not that. It's the look and what she yeah. did for that film. Yeah. It's amazing. Mm. Fuck. 
Rest yeah. in peace, man. Yeah. Lena Rest Hudgens, peace. 42. She survived by like a husband and kids and everything. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. crazy. Uh, all right. Into more craziness. So everything that's kind of happened with Dave Chappelle up until this point, right? Yeah. So the special came out, the closer. Fucking uh, hilarious. Which, yeah, I, I laughed my ass off at it. Watched it again on Friday. So did I. <laughs> just because just cause I, I wanted to get a feel for the jokes yeah. and stuff like that. I didn't want to come into this like cold, like, ah, I watched it two weeks ago. I don't yeah. know what the problem is. Um, then, like, there was some backlash. Mm. Glad jumped on board. Um, uh, NAACP, I think, also jumped on board. Oh, God. Uh, there was there was there was so much backlash. Then the one of the ex showrunners of Dear White People also jumped on board. I will never make anything um, with Netflix again. Cancel my contract or, or or cancel all of our things that we got in the fire. Yeah. Um. Uh, Ted Ted Sarandos released a piece. Mm-hmm. Um. This piece was like. Fairly numbers oriented. Dave Chappelle brings in, like, you know, a lot of viewers. I believe in free speech. These things are facts, yes. And, yeah. like, you know, he kind of put that email out. Mm. And these emails, they go to everyone in Netflix. So mm. Netflix runs a really kind of transparent organization where everyone gets the numbers, everyone gets the figures and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So this email goes out. Then um, there was an employee that kind of went, fuck this. I'm sending, um, I believe it was Hollywood reporter. No, it was, a, it was, a, it was another news publication site. I'm going to send them the actual figures of yeah. how much like, you know, uh, Netflix pays for content and stuff like that yeah. and how much it plays. Squid game ends up being on top. Um, sorry. Uh, Chappelle ends up being, I think, 24.1 million for that special, yeah. The Closer. And then Squid Game got 21.4 million for um, whatever. And then, like, you know, the list goes on and, and, and so forth. Um, then there was, like, a, um, a little town hall type thing for all the executives at a certain level they could attend like no one else beyond below this level could kind of attend but there were three people that kind of they went in there and and did did what they did and attended they got um suspended from work the person that emailed whoever the the stats they got um uh fired yeah well, actually breach of contract right yeah and privacy and privacy um and then who comes out and then Ted Sarandos comes back out again and said, look, that last comms that I sent through to everyone, that probably wasn't the best idea. And he, mm. he admits, Hey, I fucked up. Like I messed up because yeah. like, I should have led with a lot more humanity than what I did. Mm-hmm. I agreed because the first email that he sent, pretty fucking cold very cold it was, it was it was more like hey like the money matters more than like your thoughts yep as opposed to i understand what you're saying like you know this is the reasons why we're doing it mm-hmm. you know what i mean um and then at at, at this point like Ch- like people are calling for Chappelle to get cancelled yeah my thoughts are um he misstepped twice in that special. The two missteps for me were that he shouldn't have said, I'm team turf. Yeah. <laughs> like that, 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 that's a big kind of thing to say. Mm-hmm. Um, but the other thing was uh, he gave 39 minutes to the, the trans uh, minorities, you know, to that community. Yep. It was a lot, man. Yep. 40 minutes to clear things up. Like he breezes through kind of everything and then 40 minutes on 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 the trans community or, or the LGBTQ 
plus community. Yeah. Um, but I don't believe he should be cancelled. Um, no. I, I honestly think, like, we've seen comedy from Richard Pryor pushes the envelope. Seeing comedy from Eddie Murphy. Yeah. Delirious and Raw. That shit pushed the envelope fucking big time. Raw now, especially. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and now we're, we're seeing Chappelle, right? Mm. Um, and what I noticed about this special is that he, ma he makes his commentary, he makes his point, and then he, he drops a little stinger behind that. Mm. Um... I always seen like stand up comedy especially as closing the gap between us understanding another community. Mm -hmm. Like usually the backlash isn't as vocal about this cuz shit we didn't have the internet back then. Um but it was probably still there. Mm -hmm. Uh but like if we if we don't talk about like certain things, we lead out of fear. But when it's comedy, it's something different. Now, is that saying that I'm going to go out and make fun of trans people or, or anyone in the LGBTQI plus like community? Hell no. No. Um, but that was the point of like the special. Mm -hmm. He makes these jokes, but at the end of it, with his story about his friend Daphne, it, he, he kind of clears everything away and says, when she says, I don't need you to, to understand. Yeah. I need you to, to realize that it's, it's a human experience. Yeah. That I'm a person. I'm and he person. says, well, it takes one to know one. And that's the mm. thing that I believe he, will, he wants to get to. He doesn't want to like, talk about pronouns and stuff like that. It was yeah. how do we connect as people as mm. opposed to like, how do, I, how do I address you without offending you? Because he's talked about it in, in previous specials where he said our ears are too brittle. Yeah. We're so, we're so sensitive now. He, we're looking at anything to, to use to get cancel culture involved and, and like take people's livelihoods away. Dave, Dave wants to get, it sounds like he wants to get past the mundane mm. and, and have the real conversation. You know what I mean? He doesn't want to shy away from the conversation. He wants to have the conversation. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's, he, he's, he's openly said that he's got, you know, he's got people that, like, he, these are not just friends. These are people that he loves that are part of that community. Hmm. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, and if, if he was that sort of person, he wouldn't have those people in his community. Like, as, as he wouldn't have made a community with those people. Hmm. Yeah. No, I... um. It, it, it just it felt like it felt like there was there was so much shit on his chest yeah you know what i mean and he wanted to get it off mm -hmm. like it, it felt like the last 40 minutes of that special was because he was hurt because of of daphne and yeah. and how she defended him only to get kind of dragged and then she eventually killed herself whether that was a result of the dragging or not i don't know yeah um but he he did feel it did feel like he was hurt. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I I found the special funny. I, I did. I loved it. I, I think like most people didn't watch it, right? Most people are going to go off news stories and stuff like that, and then just condemn Chappelle for what they think somebody else's opinion was, right? Mm. I think. The, the, I mean, he, he, he literally spells it out for you, what he's fighting for, right? Mm. He wants, you know, the same, he, he wants the, the same sort of, the, his black community, his community to be embraced the same as their community and how, how much movement they've made, but only because they've, they've literally got, you know, majority white people in that community. Mm. And that's the only reason why. Whereas his community is still, you know, still fighting for, for half of the things that they've got already. Mm. Yeah. 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 I got that as well. Yeah. Like um, he's, it's, it's, it's never about them. It's, it's about, you know, he, he says it. It's always going to be about the whites. Like that's, yeah. that's how he feels. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny. He even makes statements like that. 
Yeah. But then still like a big part of his business is with White. He's got a photo with fucking Ted Sarandos in his <laughs> closing credits. Yeah. Hmm. I've seen Ted. Um, yeah. That, it's funny because the day after the closer dropped, Chappelle does a show at the Hollywood Bowl. Oh, man. It's got Brad Pitt. It's got Stevie Wonder there. It's got all these other people, like Bloody all these celebrities, right? John John Hamm was there singing bloody um, that song. Just a small town girl. Oh, yeah. uh, don't, don't stop believing. believing. Don't stop believing. He's on stage singing it. And then you had Snoop come out after that, and you had Kwali come out after that. Like yeah. it's just yeah. It's unbelievable. Um, but it was after he dropped his, his documentary. Yeah. Like his little screening for it. Um, and the first thing that Chappelle said, if this is what cancelled looks like, I love it. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I don't believe any, like, I don't believe in anything that Chappelle is saying. But as no. entertainment, like, it's not something that it's... I'm sort of like agreeing with and I'm going to do. Chappelle isn't like he's not a newscaster. He's not the president. He's not my prime minister. He's he's entertaining me. Yeah, mm. that's like taking fucking medical advice from Doogie Howser. You know <laughs> what I mean? Mm. Like, what the fuck are we doing here? Yeah, like I don't know. Comedy, you're meant to put a mirror to the world just so you can see the hypocrisy and make fun of it. Mm. Like it's like satire. It's pointed at the rich and powerful. If you're pointing at some someone else, it's kind of fucked up. That's not what satire is. But yeah, I 100% agree with what both of you guys are saying in regards to this case as well. Like like you said, you spelled it out. You said, my, my problem has never been with the trans community or the LGBTQI community. It's always been with white people. Hmm. And getting so close to actually possibly even making a shift in that movement, everything's flipped on its head. Hmm. That The story that he tells about... Um, that black feminist was fucking unreal, man. Mm. Sojourner Truth? Yeah. How, you know, they, they wanted her to talk, but don't, don't, don't say anything about the, the black and white issues. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, she, she had to sit separately from them as well. That's fucked up. In the meeting. She had to sit separately from them. Yeah. You can see, you can yeah. see what he's fighting for, man. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And it's exactly what the LGBT IQ community is fighting for as well. It's fucking equality. Mm. Mm. That's that's the name of the game. Yeah, yeah. I'll be here when he drops his new special. In oh man! Way. In in ten years or however long it takes, because I. I think we're going to look back and this is going to be one of the the pieces of work that helped kind of bridge that gap. It's not yeah. going to be the piece of work that helped incite massive violence against the trans community. No. I've seen people on Twitter, oh sorry, Instagram going, "Are you happy Netflix? I'm putting this dead like, you know, um, I'm putting this dead body on your doorstep because like you're responsible for it." Because uh, a, a trans person died and got killed, and they said it was it was Netflix's fault. Right, right, right. Never it's... once did I I kind of hear Chappelle talk about how he hated trans people. Right. It was because he doesn't. It was yeah, exactly. It was a disparity between. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, like. Like you said, I don't think a lot of people watch this special. You know what's crazy is that shortly after the closer dropped, in one of my group chats, all I got were TikToks that were just relating to almost the, you know, how they just cut out majority of the story and it's just the insults towards trans communities. Yeah. And that's what was floating through TikTok. So you can imagine like TikTok is pretty big and people are just going to take that bandwagon and then just start a revolt. Mm-hmm. Instead of actually taking the time to look at the whole picture. And he even said as well, look at my other specials. I said nothing negative towards the trans community. Yeah. But I think, like, everyone's entitled to their own opinion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, this is going to get, 
like aired out in the court of public opinion is going to be there. People are going to pile on without even knowing all the facts. I don't even mm -hmm. believe I I know all the facts. Same. Um, I did hear there was a show in London because like he if the closer gets taken down <laughs> off Netflix. Then he's going to do like a 10 city tour in the US. But he's out there at the moment in London and he did a gig. Um, and like everyone, including like this lesbian couple, loved it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. A lot, of, a lot of people there who actually paid to go see Dave mm -hmm. um, were like, they really enjoyed it and they were supportive of him. Yeah. Yeah. I hope that Dave comes down to Australia again. I'm going, man. Uh, I'm going. It's I'll be part there. of the list. Even if it's the closer again, I don't care. You know what I mean? Like if it's yeah. just, it won't be the same material. No. Nah. Mm. But yeah, I'll be there. Yeah, definitely. Like, Hell yeah. Looking at these these specials that have come through, none of it has has made me personally feel like I should have a negative you know view on any other community. Um, I have friends who are part of the same community as well, mm, mm. and I still accept them however they they want to be, and I love them for it as well. Mm. Do you do you fuck around with these friends? Do you make fun of them? Not like personally, no, not to them. Like some of them are still yeah, very but sensitive. If you guys to were together, would you, you guys be like fucking around and making fun of each other, right? If just we were like, closer, just like, yeah, just like people do. Yeah. yeah. That's like not, about, not about their sexuality. Yeah, not though. about their sexuality, but just... Yeah. Yeah. Like, we'll run raids in Destiny, we'll talk shit. It's just exactly. how it is. So, we're, yeah. like, the, the whole the whole punching down thing, is that, that's, that's not a thing, then. Yeah. Basically, what you're saying when you're saying um, you're, you're punching down is that the community that you're talking about is, is a low community. Mm. Yeah. Like, you're putting them down there. Whereas Dave doesn't see them like that. He yeah. sees them like everybody else. Everybody else can get these jokes. They, there, there are jokes about the Jewish community in this, in this special. Yeah. There's jokes mm -hmm. about the Asian community. There's jokes about women in here, about Dave specifically, you know, punching women. There was no, no backlash. Where was the backlash be? You know what I, I mean? I did see something about the like him fighting a lesbian yeah i didn't look too much into it but it wasn't as loud as as the trans community mm. yeah so all so, so what they're saying is all that other stuff is fine but just this is this is not okay i don't like that well mm. they were Everybody everyone should... was fine with the racial stuff as yeah. well when he when he was when he makes commentary about the, the african-american community yeah he's everyone's happy with it yeah about clifford he... yeah yeah. Everybody, everybody, yeah. Specifically talks about a slave who then goes on to buy slaves. Yeah. And I haven't seen anything in the news about it. Like it's, yeah. We pick and choose, like people are picking, picking and choosing their outrage. Which is yeah. Crazy. yeah. But, what's, what's the most relevant thing right now that I can be angry at? Yeah. Because mm. that's what gives people purpose nowadays. Hmm. I mean, that's why I just, I just do me, man. <laughs> Fucking, I accept you how you are. You accept me how I am. I love you personally. It's just how it is. Give love to everyone, man. Yeah, man. I don't have time to, to single out a, a single community and, and hate and all that. It's too much work, B. Yeah. Like, I can't, I don't even think about that stuff. Like, it's just dumb to me. Like, mm. why would you, like, you know... Like, what if the trans person was, like, you know, the best fucking cook in the world? I can't eat at that restaurant. Like, why? Do you eat the food there? <laughs> <laughs> like, seriously. Like, it doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. We come from a country that, that was based on that. It was yeah. ruled like that. Mm. It was ruled like that until we fucking left that country. Yeah. Like, people don't get it, Pete. Nah. Yeah. You know what the biggest thing is, is that if you like just put everyone into a box and then you choose not to fuck with anyone, you miss out on so many just amazing opportunities. 
You might have a friend out there who's like, hey, I got a personal rock climbing rink in my fucking house. So I missed out on this this whole fucking time. Just because I chose to be a bigot. <laughs> For me, it's 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 like people want to be separated. They they want mm. they want okay, now this community can only deal with this community and this community can only be like like they, they want the separation. Yeah. Like I don't like the separation. Everybody needs to be together and do their own thing together. Yeah. Like that that's how it should be. That's what a community is. That's what a tribe is. Mm. Yeah. Exactly Everyone right. in that tribe plays a fucking role. Yeah. We, we've seen through history what happens with segregation, what happens like Jim Crow era, for example. Like we see everything that could happen and what it fucking did for a lot of communities. And moving forward, how much better we could be as just one people. Dude, we, we were born in apartheid South Africa. Me and Rob were born in apartheid South Africa. Yeah. Like... That that's as segregated as you can get. Hmm. It's wild. Love everyone, man. That's all I'm saying. I can know. I ain't got time for this bullshit. And if you got time, you need to figure out a different hobby, my guy. Badly. Because everybody's getting these jokes. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell. These hands are rated E for everybody, my guy. <laughs> Take us out there, Beatty. Alrighty. I'm not going to be the uh, the public speaker that the big dogs were on this one. But for our last piece of work, um, so as we know, Ruby Rose was out and she played Batwoman. Mm. Um, during her time there, we didn't hear much, but we Bat did see... Woman, not girl. That's yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fact. <laughs> but like... Uh, we saw the reviews coming through for Batwoman, some of it positive, some uh, detailing a lot of, uh, I guess, Ruby Rose being a little bit stiff when she was fighting bits and pieces. But overall, it seemed rather positive. Mm -hmm. uh, what had happened moving forward, though, is that Ruby Rose has now come out recently on Wednesday saying enough is enough. Um, everything that happened on set was really fucked up. Uh, I was threatened to be taken out of the show because I had a surgery because of many injuries and rather than giving me the time or the few weeks that I needed to recover, you only gave me 10 days, mm. which is very fucked up. And she's name dropping everyone here as well. She's going from executive producers to directors to showrunners. Like it's just wild. What's going on here? Ruby Rose has come on basically detailed everything, uh, especially the negative effects on the set, as well as directors who were treating women inappropriately and just everything going on on the set, which is fucking crazy. Like, it's always wild to hear about this shit happening on set, especially shortly after Ray Fisher's movement with trying to get everything and equality mm. that's happening as well. We have seen the comments behind it as well with Ruby Rose. Um, a lot of people saying, well, if this is what's happening on set, um, could this be part of her interview recently where she said, hey, I'd love to come back as a cameo for the next Batwoman series that comes out and the, the declination of that and her just like, you know, saying, well, this is bullshit. Now I'm just going to put this out mm. and everything but going on. WB is really turning into the new Miramax, eh? Yeah. yeah. It's weird. Yeah. Very, like, very weird. And an excerpt of what she said was that I'm going to tell the whole world what really happened on that set. I will come for you. <laughs> Very taken. <laughs> so what happened to me never happens to another person again. And so I can finally take back my life and the truth. Shame on you. She had a lot of smoke for Dugray Scott too. Oh really? man. Yeah. He was like, Dugray used to just demean like women on set, scream at them, make them cry and shit. Yeah. Yeah. We had uh, a set worker who had third degree burns all over their fucking body during the, the production of the show, as well as someone who was left quadriplegic. Mm. Apparently, like the person that was burnt, the stunt person, mm. like his face peeled off Fuck. in front of all the crew and shit like that. That's how badly burnt he was. Fuck. And the, um, the production assistant who was on the phone at the time like something fell on her and she she was a quadriplegic and then wb just wouldn't pay pay her or pay for her medical fees or anything like that fucking christ and like coming from the states 
like where we were in hospital for like half a day and it ended up being $3,600 to tell us it was the flu. <laughs> it's like those hospital bills is expensive. That's like, like they're, we're talking about millions of dollars here. Yeah. You know, the, yep. the, the, like all the MRIs and all that sort of stuff that I had. Yeah. Uh-huh. You know, they're like $75,000 a pop over there. Fuck. They're like mad expensive. I didn't pay for not one of them. Fucking Christ. That's crazy, man. That is wild. But yeah, like. A lot of the shit that happened on the set just sounds fucking crazy. Like, this sounds like the nightmare that you never ever want to see. I've only ever heard of, like, something similar happening in Australia here, but it was still dealt with. So I have a mate, and he was working night shift at this construction yard. And now, with one of the fucking, the moving trucks they have, you have to chain down the sides because they're spring-loaded and they will flip up if you don't. Shit. One day... Guy locks down the left side, doesn't lock down the right side, and as he's walking past, this thing fucking flies up, and it takes off his face. Doesn't kill him, though. He is still there, conscious, in shock, shaking, and his face is just fucked. Work refused to pay the fucking compo for it. He had to go to court for that shit. Fuck, that's scary. But my mate was saying, like, when he saw it, it's like all the blood just ran out of him. Because this dude's face was literally just, like, peeled in half. Ugh. Fuck that. Shit makes my skin crawl. Yeah. Mm. Fuck. We, um, need, we need more transparency on set. And these CW shows sound like they're just getting real fucked up now. Yeah. Fucking CW. We, we need an adjudicator like John Wick to fucking settle all this <laughs> shit in. <laughs> But then, um, so that that's one that's one side of the argument, right? And then um, the CW or WB came through and they were like, "Hey, like we did fire Ruby Rose. They didn't admit to that before, um, mm-hmm. but we don't agree with her revisionist history, which is, <laughs> which is like really, really wild." And then Cameras Johnson, I think his name is Cameras Johnson, um, who plays uh, Nightwing in the show. Mm-hmm. He came out and he was like, um, Ruby Rose was, was probably the most toxic person on set. Yeah. Then, Jesus. then a production assistant came through and they were like, Ruby Rose um, once like dropped like a drink or something like that. And it spilled all over the, f- the floor in front of me. And then she yeah. walked past as I was holding the door and she, was, she looked down at the spill and then she was like, well... You're going to do something about that? And then just walked off. So, like, like Ruby Rose might be coming out of, like, you know, all this hurt and stuff like that, getting fired, that embarrassment, whatnot, and then kind of feel a way now. Know what I mean? Mm. But I don't think, like, while she's probably, like, good and everything, like, she's telling the truth, I don't think everything's all good. Mm. Yeah. Like, it takes two to tango, you know what I mean? WB wouldn't just shit on her. Just for yeah. like doing a job only, hmm. but then again, she might have been really outspoken, and then they might have just went, "Well, you know, you want to play hardball? Get out of here, Jesus! <laughs> take a walk, <laughs> Rose. <laughs> you can take all that, have a heart shit, and run it down the road." <laughs> um, so, like, I want to. <laughs> <laughs> I, wa- I want to see what happens. Um, because like, yeah, there's, there's a lot of shit that happens behind the scenes. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like both parties could be responsible moving forward. We don't know, but there needs to be more transparency around what the fuck happens. Yeah. More quality control across Mm -hmm. all departments. I'm, I'm, I'm not a fucking expert when it comes to this shit. I'm not at all. Like, I could be wrong completely, but it just feels like there's there's not a lot that's going on to help clear shit up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, unless they ran cameras the whole time, like, there wouldn't be any footage or any evidence. It'd just be hearsay. Yeah. Very true. Hmm. But no. So, look, all the best for WB, all the best for Ruby Rose. I'm not too sure which party is in the red here but moving forward hopefully we can sort everything out yeah fucking a yes sir all right but 
That's it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, just quickly, what do you guys think about Dune? It's the newest release. I wanted more. For... <laughs> I did. I wanted more. It 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 felt like one third of the movie. All right, so yeah. I to to get ready for Dune, I watched the two thousand miniseries that came out, and just seeing how much more story there was in there. Right, I mean, you that there is no, you don't see the princess to the emperor. You um, there's a whole other other um, nephew that the um, that O has. Yeah. Um, the 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 Bautista nephew is like the dumb nephew essentially. Yeah. Um, he's the smarter one. Uh, there's a we we didn't even get to see him become more deep. You know yeah. what I mean? Like he to get his namesake and everything. Um, yeah, it's just it's, there's a whole lot of story that's been left on the table there, man. Yeah, and it, it it doesn't feel like this is a, a two movie. It feels like it's 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 a trilogy. Yeah, that's what I, I kind of felt. I can feel it sort of ending the next one with him becoming you know the muadib and and all that and then the the very last one is him taking back arrakis and and all that and yeah yeah but um other than that like performances were really really good uh what's her face really did just cry the whole time rebecca ferguson yeah um i, I could have done with some more what's his face momo in there and um yeah. what's his face um brolin yeah, and Oscar, 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 I knew was going to die pretty early. Yeah, so yeah, it would have been nice to see them, you know, in there a bit more in in the mini series. I know um, Momoa's character was he, he's in there for a bit longer. He doesn't die there. Oh, he actually he goes with them to the um, the Fremen base. Yeah, he's yeah. there with them. Um, yeah, and then they they end up finding. Um, Uncle, is it Dudley? What's his face? His name, Brolin's name. Ah, uh, uh, Halleck. Gurney. Yeah. Gurney. Yeah, they they end up finding him there, serving the um, the Harkins or whatever his name is. They they are like he's their slave essentially. Oh shit! Okay. He's like held held captive. He's not dead. He's held captive there yeah. by them. Yeah. Fuck, so Brolin could be in the second one then. Yeah, that, that, I, I think he will be. Or he should be. He has to. He's, his character's not dead. Yes. Yeah. I liked it, man. Yeah. I, I, I enjoyed it. I, um, I watched the first half an hour again today, and hmm. then I watched the last half an hour last night. Because yeah. I was like, where, like, where do, where, where are the arcs there? Yeah. Like if you're looking at it like one complete movie, but I can't get a read on it because I kind of feel like there's there is so much more. Yeah. And the movie just starts and then it's over. It's done. Yeah. Um but everything from like the set design, the costume design, the shots, Greg Fraser, the Ozio, he mm. fucking nailed this movie. It looked nice. I loved how like big in scope it was. Yeah. Like just the way, like the, in space, the sh the ships look like tiny, but when they land, they take up the whole screen. And then yeah. how they they show scale by having like the the little people there in the in the foreground, yeah. and then in the background is massive ship. Mm -hmm. um, it felt it did feel epic, but it just it just felt it felt short for a long movie. Weirdly, yeah. um, mm -hmm. Timothy Chalamet made me believe. <laughs> <laughs> Like I, I, I really, I really liked him as a character. Yeah, um, he's a good Paul. Good yeah. Paul, that is. Yeah, it'd be cool to see him just get absolutely jacked for the next one, though. Yeah, mm. not just wear that suit and look yeah. like you know solid. Yeah, because I mean, he he will end up. I mean, he doesn't end up leading the Fremen, but he, you know, they 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 see him as a leader. Yeah, of mm. the Fremen. Yeah. His uh, his name is the you know he he chooses the name of that you know that that desert rat that you see him you see the 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 digital version of it like the hologram version of it and then he sees one after that as well 
Yeah. Mm. That's his name, is Muadib. That's what that is. That's ah. a desert rat. Yeah. It's, okay. um, yeah. Mm. He eventually becomes the Mahdi. Which is um, it's like the Jesus character, right? Yeah. Okay. Of 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 Dune. Yeah. It's the Mardi. That's their that's their god. That that's why they there's all those throwaway lines. You know how when um she's like, Have you ever worn a whatever suit it is before? Yeah. And she's like, He'll he'll come from outer space or whatever it is and know your customs or something like that. Yeah. Know your ways or something like that. Yeah. That that's like Paul's prophecy. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like going into spoilers. I did like, um, like right at the end there, you know how he kind of sees his future and then the voice is telling him, Hey, you got to die. And then you're going to become like this, yeah. this person. Yeah. And how he then changes his fate. Yeah. Because it's like, he, he sees the vision, but then does the opposite. Mm-hmm. Mm. I like that shit. Yeah. I really, um, really like that shit. I don't know. For me, I, I sort of walked in here with with zero expectation because I didn't know like half the fucking story when it came to Dune. I was like, uh, "It's a desert. It's a sand dune." <laughs> 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 but um, I enjoyed it from what I saw. But yeah, like I mentioned before, I think it's just because I didn't have the information prior, or like I didn't read the book from the '60s. I didn't watch the fucking movie or the miniseries. So I just kind of walked in here. I was like. This is pretty fucking good. <laughs> I'm gonna get this fucking. <laughs> but no, I enjoyed what I saw. Um, I did want to see more of Brolin because his performance when he like trains with fucking Chalamet was cool, man. And he's talking mm. about the Harkonnen like that. Buckle is mad. Really gets you like. <laughs> he fucking gets in there, and growls at him. <laughs> but no, nah, no, nah, I I enjoyed it, and I'm excited for the next part. Did, did they say there's only going to be two parts? Or do you reckon there'll be more? They they did say two parts for now. But it okay. just doesn't feel like... Like with the, the rest of the story, it doesn't feel like it should just be two parts. They, yeah. like, after that, they go back to... They go back to that sea, the whatever it is it's, it's called, right? And there's like tens of thousands of Fremen there. He um he starts his, his training then. Hmm. He also starts going out to all the um, all the elders in all of those seas because you know how they said there's there's millions of them there. Yeah, and he says, "I want your young, I want your young um, soldiers to come train with me." And he trains them how to use the voice and and all that sort of stuff. So they're they're like an unstoppable army then, right? And that that's the desert power. Um, he also Javier Badem, Badem's um, character. Is is he? Um, he sees him coming up as the leader of the of the clan, and the clan sort of like their their way is if there's someone stronger that he needs to lead us. Yeah. Um. He um. They end up. He challenges him and everything, but then Paul puts a stop to all of that, right? And they they start running like these these sort of um, guerrilla sort of raids on the Harkonnen. Like on, because because they they want to come through and they'll they'll take like you know all the all the raids and all the spice and all that sort of stuff. They'll they'll do all these raids. Yeah. And only after that, only after like you know, I mean, him him and Zadea they have a child and everything, and then the Harkonnen kill the the child and everything. And uh, what's her face is pregnant as well. Um, Rebecca Ferguson's character is supposed to be pregnant as well, and yeah. she. she that you know how they talk about, you know, you gave us a boy instead of a girl. Yeah. Ends up having the girl. Um, yeah, but, but Paul's Paul's little boy gets killed and then they go. Then they go back to um, Arrakis and they, they take over shit there. Yeah. But then it's like, it's weird, right? Because uh, Zendaya becomes his wife or should become his wife. Um, but then to sort of appease the emperor and everything he has to Paul has to get married to to the princess of mm. so that you know there's an alliance there and they can't kill each other then and that's that's how he keeps out of trade's name so just like just like his mother was a concubine zendaya would become the concubine but zendaya would bear his kids and the other one won't 
Well, yeah. Shit. Yeah. Shit. So okay. it's like when when you look at it that way, like the story is giant. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you They've can't ever... you can't do all of that last part in, in, in two and a half hours. Yeah. 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 Like, I don't know. I reckon it's gonna be a three parter. Like if they they should have just set out and said, Look, it's a three part movie and you know it's just so much story there. Yeah. yeah. I don't know how the fuck they're gonna wrap that up. You can't Unless they're gonna cut can't. out a shitload. Which which Denny like I don't think he wants to. Same. Uh Colbert. Colbert interviewed Denny and he said, um what's his face? This is the closest adaptation to the book that I've ever seen. More yep. than more than the um more than the miniseries, more than the um than the movie. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Fuck. So yeah. Sorry, I'm into the next one. Took over that fucking. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I, I was in. I was about to get the popcorn out. And shit. I know. I was, tell, I was really tell me more. <laughs> yeah, that's why I'm saying. Like, it just it, it it's, it's not enough story there. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> I'm excited. Like, um, I still the only, like the thing. Like, I want more. I wanted more Brolin. I didn't like that CG part when he has the vision of him fighting, you know, from the trailer. Where it's all yeah. CG. I didn't like that. Same. Probably could have kept that like live mm. action or just cut it out completely because it just kind of looks ass. But yeah. like, other than that, I, the visuals for this movie were fucking gorgeous mm. as well. Yeah. Good lord. Like some of the shots, like even going through that sandstorm when he shuts down everything in the ship, and then you that see them cool. just like the spin like that. Mm. That was cool. Fucking all the ships, all the detailing, like it was just uh, chef's kiss on this motherfucker. Man. <laughs> so you know how you know how when when he goes to see that Benny Gesserit um, mother or whatever it is, and she's like yeah. Neil and whatever it is. Yeah, that's yeah. how they fight. So it's almost like they're they're teleporting like that. They're really really <laughs> fast. Okay. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. So Fuck he teaches he teaches the Fremen how to do that fuck yeah how to fight like that fuck yeah so the fights in the next one or at least the third one i reckon would be unbelievable mm. what do you I'm call it you watch know that mini series right now <laughs> i got it yeah. i got it somewhere <laughs> you, got- you know what's like the maddest teleporting fights i've seen like one of the maddest scenes i've seen with a teleport fight was fucking looper when uh, Billy Elliot comes through and he's running down that hall, but he's like teleporting through like that. Jumper. 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 Looper. Yeah. I thought Don't you were going to say X Men. Oh, yeah. Start of X2 as well. Yeah. So, like, I just love that where it's like a force behind the teleport. Like, <laughs> yeah. I've, I've always I've always been the advocate for Flash and Quicksilver to have like the, the fucking <laughs> when they go off. Yeah. 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 Well, Should they're running like that. that fast. In theory, they, they break the sound barrier. So. Mm. It'd be like Arthur underwater as well. Yeah. Like yeah. That same thing should happen to Flash. But it, it because of the speed force, it it manifests in that in the electricity. That's what that's what the electricity is. Yeah. Yeah. It's breaking space and time. Mm. But no, like overall I enjoyed it. I thought it was cool. But I need to watch it again. Like I want to watch it again now. Yeah. Well, I, I just started it, and it feels a lot better. It feels yeah. a lot different. I also watched this piece on Vanity Fair where Denis was kind of just breaking down that scene with the the Gom mm. Yeah. Um, with the you know the box, the yeah, hand yeah. in the box. Um, Pause. Yeah. <laughs> in the cookie jar. <laughs> 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 uh, in yeah. the in the mini series, you see him put his hand in the box, and then like it. It shows him his hand, but then you just see his hand start deteriorating and start yeah, eating yeah. away and whatnot. Yeah, that's the pain, supposedly. Shit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's a wrap. Yes, sir. Right. Um, you can catch us on all social media, uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all them, uh, all them hits. We're on Spreaker as well under Logo Smith Media. We're also still on YouTube. Logo Smith Media, like, subscribe to all that uh, jazzy good stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll be back next week with uh, what's coming out next week? Anything coming out? Can we reach it out next week? No. No. 
Damn it. Yeah. But, like, you know, everyone will be getting ready for Halloween, so. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty yeah. sure they'll release something or drop something. Um, hmm. Love yourself and love movies. Get vaccinated or don't get vaccinated. It's all the same to us now. And uh, vape more, smoke less, and uh, wash your ass.